Also, es geht darum, ist Österreich ein Überwachungsstaat oder ist das nur die... This uh, talk will be uh, examining whether or not Austria is uh, a surveillance state or whether this is just um, amateur digitization. So, welcome to the stage, Thomas Lohninger and Angelika Adensamer. Oh Gott, ich und mein Aufschreiben. Ich kann nicht mal meine eigene Schrift I lesen. I can't even read my own writing. She's a policy advisor. So, something like a lawyer, is that right? Natarin, ich habe keine Ahnung. Juristische Beraterin. Das ist doch super. Legal advisor. Cool, dann, herzlichen großen Applaus, bitte. Applause. Hallo und herzlich willkommen. Um, Hi ja, and welcome. Wir wurden eigentlich schon vorgestellt. We uh, have been introduced. Es uh, ist auch ein bisschen unfair, weil wir It's haben vorhin Speaker haben. Es ist ein bisschen unfair, weil wir nicht dazugehören. Wir haben uns in der Speaker-Room gehört und er hat uns die ganze Zeit gehört. Wir wollten über Austria und die Dinge, die in Austria passiert sind, sprechen. Wir wollten über Austria und die Dinge, die in Austria passiert sind, sprechen. Wir wollten über Austria und die Dinge, die in Austria passiert sind, sprechen. Wir wollten über Austria und die Dinge, die in Austria passiert sind, sprechen. Wir wollten über Austria und die Dinge, die in Austria passiert sind, sprechen. Wir wollten über Austria und die Dinge, die in Austria passiert sind, sprechen. But first, let's uh, talk about who we are. We work for Epicenter Works. We uh, work in uh, Vienna, but uh, have a lot of European uh, work as well. It uh, was founded in uh, 2010 to, uh, as, a, as a society to um, overthrow this uh, mass data storage. The, um, and that worked. The European law no longer exists, but um, we have similar forms of mass surveillance even today. In 2015, we uh, approached a new thing uh, to do, and that was um, an internal uh, secret service in Austria that uh, was being uh, founded there and um, we were sure that there was potential for abuse with uh, such broad privileges. Another thing is net neutrality. We uh, started the campaign SaveTheInternet.eu and after many, many uh, lobby campaigns we've uh, reached some uh, great protections for net neutrality in Austria. There's no talk on this subject by me this year. But uh, next year there'll be a reform in the, of, of net neutrality in Europe. And something people are very concerned about in Austria and in, in Germany is uh, the state Trojan, so state-sponsored uh, viruses, state-built viruses that uh, are used for surveillance. But let's uh, look at what happened in Austria in the past year. Finally, we are back on the world stage. Sebastian Kurz, the, the Austrian Chancellor, managed to get on the uh, cover of Time. There are not many Austrians who managed uh, to do that. And he was being uh, heralded as the new face of the right. The federal government in uh, Austria is the, uh, are the FPO and uh, ÖVP parties, and uh, here's a symbolic image of what that means for democracy. Unfortunately, that's a real photograph. And, uh, of course, we have to do with a mass of topics here, and we are going to leave the core area of uh, net politics. But uh, everything was easier back in the days. Look at the uh, Almdudler ashtray in the background. Angelika's first reaction was my favorite. This is where they want to get back to. And it was easier back in the days because the politics didn't understand the internet and it was something that was easy to ignore. But today it's a, it's a core issue. We looked at uh, this manifesto in the first 24 hours and uh, published a color coded. Um, version of it. That this version summarizes that there's a new surveillance package 
there's a broadening of uh, surveillance powers and internet politics is essentially industry politics. There's still no transparency law and European law is being broken in a few places. And the European Union was also important because uh, we had the pres pre presidency and uh, this meant that many European topics that should be uh, done, would usually be uh, treated in Brussels, were now being uh, discussed in Austria. We also were presidents of the European Protection Board and um, we had to reach uh, European consensuses and uh, even, even though there are, we had very few privileges there. We also had uh, the presidency, held the presidency of Beric. We had uh, a lot to do in uh, last year. One topic that uh, what was a huge subject was the uh, surveillance package that was uh, the same as last year. And uh, after eight months of campaigning against this, uh, we were able to, um, to overthrow eight of these 12 proposed measures. And um, we celebrated this as a, as a success and the uh, minister resigned and uh, the uh, but that was when the uh, when the uh, right extremist right wing uh, FPO was uh, an opposition party and opposed these uh, surveillance measures and uh, also opposed the FPO who uh, proposed these me measures now both of them are part of the government and uh, they've evidently uh, changed their mind. The surveillance package has returned. Here's a short, here's a small overview of uh, what's in there. Uh, on one of the measures is state-run uh, uh, spy software, spyware, the broadening of CCTV, use of IMSI cat cap, uh, catchers, use of uh, license plate recognition, uh, bulk data storage. That is slightly different because uh, there is a very low threshold. Um, the registration of SIM cards is going to uh, be uh, obligatory and uh, the uh, uh, changes in uh, letter secrecy. And um, we went to protest this in, uh, at, at minus uh, 20 degrees. We were very unlucky with the, the weather at our protests. And the, uh, there, there was a lot of criticism even in 2017, but um, when uh, these were proposed again just a year after, that was, uh, we, uh, we really uh, went to, to took the streets again and, and uh, we also had a lot of arguments uh, about the hearings, which were supposed to be uh, non-public. And um, as is uh, Viennese tradition, we, uh, when we met with the opposition in a cafe, we flew in uh, Constanze Kurz and our lawyer explained our criticism to uh, the, all the opposition parties in front of the media just to just uh, to get it uh, get it out there so on the Wednesday the following week the security package was passed in Parliament and how should it be guaranteed that in Austria where the gap in the law was uh, uh, that the gap was left open deliberately. An internet, a security hole, a back door for children is left unpatched so that you can query and research and that's 
because I'm asking how can you guarantee that this won't happen in Austria? Well, I can't really see the connection between IT security in the public sector and the security package, I have to just tell you. But uh, the I think these are two very relevant but different topics. Sebastian Kurz uh, is about my age. He grew up with the internet. He should understand these things. And uh, you see what our job is. We They lack technical expertise, politicians of all parties. And particularly regarding the federal state Trojan, there, there are complex issues at stake. Uh, the knowledge that there is a secure hole is required that a Trojan can be installed and that such holes can always be used by third parties is something that in most countries simply doesn't occur in the debate and we managed to get this uh, information up to the Chancellor, the head of government, and as soon as the software will be, will be in use in Austria, I think the debate will go on. Sadly, it won't be the case that IT security will be better in Austria than in other countries. And the person that made it most clear was our technology minister, Norbert Hofer. Well, if I'm hacked, I will then be hacked, yeah. Um, but actually, the surveillance package isn't that bad. Kickel, the interior minister, says about it that it's targeted, if, if effective, proportionate, surgically precise and uh, equipped with a package of legal recourse, legal securities. We looked at whether this is true and we looked at legal securities and you have different measures here in this graph and the measures against them, you see a red dot. So you see that these are points where legal protections are missing and we then looked at whether this is surgically precise and uh, not a mass surveillance measure and then we thought, well, um, if we are talking about surveillance in the public, public space, that's something you can hardly evade and a um, data storage that can be used across the board registration obligation for SIM cards, these are mass surveillance measures and a bit of mass surveillance is already too much. These measures are now going to come into force one after the other. The first ones are in force. The ones with the red frame uh, are in force since June 2018. The others, for the others, there's a bit more time. The state Trojan has been postponed until 2020. It is the law is passed, but it will only be applicable from 2020. Uh, there is development going on, work going on, and uh, they see whether everything is feasible. And uh, it is to going to be extended in 2025 automatically unless Parliament votes otherwise. And we consider this a measure that is illegal against the Constitution, but unfortunately. We have very little ways of recourse. We hope that the opposition parties, uh, as one of their MPs has already announced, that they will go to the Constitution Court and have this checked. Um, what else is was very uh, important this year was the BVT affair. Uh, the, uh, the Secret Service will be known to some people now this year. We have been dealing with it for, for a bit longer by, from the time when the legal foundation for this interior Secret Service was created. And we already then said there is hardly enough control and transparency. And to cap it all, to crown it all, there is, we have now a search or home of the uh, in this interior secret service because of corruption and North Korean passport templates and uh, in that search data about the right extremist scene uh, from the head of the right extreme department were taken. This is someone who wasn't actually accused of anything in this. Uh, and what does this have to do with the interior minister? Well, his highest civil servants that he selected himself, uh, he went along with witnesses to the court and um, told them to enforce the accusations so that this search will take place. And uh, so we have a FBO politician involved in this search and there are minutes that say that uh, they took a plastic bag of hard disks and uh, surely this is something that the investigative committee that exists for the for this interior secret service will have a lot of things to clarify and uh it's good that this um 
committee looks at both scandals, the one that happened under the interior minister by the FPÖ, the right-wing party, because there's a lot to look at what this service actually did since its inception in 2002, and then the second affair under interior minister Kickel, this rebranding. And uh, we know that the, the search that was conducted was illegal. That's uh, what has been resolved, uh, judged by the court, ruled by the courts. But then tactics were changed. Uh, Kickel is no longer trying to rebrand this using the uh, uh, home search, but they are, are looking at secret services as a whole because we have no separation between secret services and police and the threat that head positions will be rebranded is very strong. Another thing where the security apparatus is being upgraded is the police and justice, but also the police. 11,000 new jobs are going to be added. At the same time, Interior Minister Kickel is lowering the hurdles concerning uh, concerning reading and writing capabilities and so the police ranks are they are trying to fill and we had this campaign has kick gone yet uh there was a sad no uh but uh, for a long time but these days you can sign a petition there for the resignation of mr kicker habit kicker this site will stay up as long as habit kicker is in office so you can pass it on tell your friends about it No uh, internet politics review would be complete without the GDPR that uh, went in force, that came into force in uh, May. And uh, the panic, of course, was uh, was uh, huge with uh, large fines that could be imposed and. Um, with requirements to change national laws. That was a very long process in Austria as well, even though this was known uh, two years beforehand. But of course, there was a was a flood of uh, changes in laws in the first quarter of 2018, including uh, the fact that uh, sanctions or fines should uh, that uh, are enshrined in European law shouldn't apply initially. That's a fun idea, but it um, it, it doesn't work that way. People think that we don't have uh, fines in Austria, but that's just not the case. Um, another thing that's very worrying is the fact that surveillance is used uh, disproportionately against minorities. Some examples of this from the past year. This is an algorithm that uh, is used for um, for, for unemployed people to help them find work and uh, these are being split into three groups that's the first of these is group a that's uh, highly educated people who uh, don't uh, get any funding there's a group b they get um, uh, they get group a does not get any funding group b gets most of the funding and group c is fairly hopeless and again gets no funding at all and um, this algorithm downgrades people who have many children or live in the countryside and they're therefore more likely to uh, be part of group c that does not get any funding at all and the uh, justification was that this uh, simply mirrors the uh, discrimination that already happens, but of course this simply furthers discrimination. There's also a dragnet investigation in uh, health data. Insurance companies use, have to use um, risk assessment tools to uh, and have to screen how many people uh, call in uh, sick if um, this happens too frequently or too long all this has to be double checked and 
all this uh, is supposed to make these companies more economical. Angelika mentioned that uh, many uh, things um, crossed our desk in the past year. We uh, went the extra mile and read all of them, and there was one uh, law where we had to had to act immediately, and this uh, law wanted to open all databases, all uh, public databases for research, and um, that can be uh, financial data, but also health data, and that can be used by universities, but also by Cambridge Analytica. That just lay about as a law, nobody cared, but we discovered it and um, showed this to uh, opposition parties, to the media, we tried to raise awareness, but nobody was interested. And we finally met a journalist who uh, ran the story, and um, suddenly it was in uh, in all the papers. And uh, now there's an ethics board, and all everything has to be cleared by the individual uh, ministries. And there's uh, no longer any. Uh, it's it's no longer easy as easy to sue, but um, and uh, these. Data have to be uh, have to use pseudonyms, but um, there are, uh, it's uh, very easy to discover to to discover correlations. Uh, just last week, there was a draft social welfare reform that with access to all kinds of data for. Uh, on uh, household data and other data and what was also planned in this measure was that uh, the nationality of the biological parents was supposed to be accessible so that gave it the name that we not we but others gave it the Aryans paragraph because there's no way that you should underst could understand why the nationality of biological parents should be of interest but that of course to shows you where this all is going and uh, also with asylum procedures uh, which has been severely restricted uh, again basic rights were massively restricted also concerning privacy rights, uh, so authorities were allowed to ask asylum seekers to hand over and, uh, their mobile devices and have them read out completely. That's a much stricter measure than those affected, affecting the accused in criminal procedures, criminal court cases. At the same time, um, medical secrecy rights were restricted, so doctors have to uh, now report or give information on those that seek asylum or that those that are going to be deported and we in this area network with other NGOs that are not just from that net politics field that has been very valuable and the fact that we could add our expertise on privacy and net politics and bring it together with expertise in the social securities and, and, and asylum uh, procedures. The Solidarity Pact was a pact of NGOs, kind of that we funded with other NGOs, and uh, one of the largest in Austria is involved, and 60 others have now joined as well. And the idea is that when attacks on civil freedoms happen, you would stand together and uh, join forces and if some NGOs themselves get attacked, which in times like these does happen, this is very important. Another thing that had to be implemented this year is the um, passenger data pr pr processing directive and uh, this is about storing passenger name records and, and surely this directive is in violation of EU basic rights. There has been an ECJ judgment about exactly this data between Canada and the EU. Austria didn't only implement this directive, but also even they what they call gold-plated it and uh, passed stronger measures than was required on the at the EU level. The requirement was that flights into the EU or out of the EU should underlie storage, but not interior EU flights, but that's what's included in the implementation in Austria. 
uh, it's about the whole record that is very broad, everything that's connected with the flight. So that is, of course, uh, departure and destination, uh, the, the places and, and the names of the people involved, booking details, the time of the booking, uh, the method, payment method, and also information on the seats assigned, so the meal choices, which, of course, gives you an insight into religion at some time. And uh, this will then be passed twice to national authorities, and that's before departure and after arrival. And uh, that, of course, is ex excessive, and that has been confirmed by the ECJ, and we will be going to the courts against this together with the Gesellschaft für Freiheitsrechte in Germany. So we are uh, optimistic, uh, that uh, this will be abolished just like data retention. In order to not have to clear up things nationally after things have gone wrong at the EU level, it's important to deal with EU topics early on uh, because you are most efficient as a small organization in the EU if you are there early and a topic that has been um, engaging us is the copyrights directive. We warned against these upload filters as early as 2016, saying that they're nothing but the censorship infrastructure that we know from China, uh, because people's contents are checked before they can even appear. And that is creates a very dangerous precedent. And uh, we warned that upload filters, as soon as they existed, just like every infrastructure, would be extended, and we were confirmed. By now, we have the terrorism regulation that, even before the copyright directive is finished, uh, wants used to use upload filters against extremist content. But there's more in this copyright directive. This is an uh, ancillary, ancillary copyright for publishers, and this is dangerous in times of fake news, when the task is to, uh, to spread and quote journalist content and not prohibit it. We've been on the road against this law for a long time and we want to take actions of different kinds to show that this is a one-way road for the internet as well as for society as a whole. And <clears throat> a network life uh, that we that is going to be threatened in our democratic times is very important to have uh, these rights. And these actions have not just been taking place in Vienna but also in Graz and Innsbruck. And, uh, the last we did was hold a press conference with the head of the Wikimedia Foundation in Vienna, because Wikipedia, of course, is, is particularly affected by this. They have hardly any copyright violations because they have an active community, but they quote uh, press content a lot. And maybe soon they will not be able to continue as they have been, been acting before when this ancillary, if this ancillary copyright happens. Axel Voss, the rapporteur, was very happy when, the, when he got his file passed in the parliament. But this laugh should not make you resign or um, should not make you give up because there is a chance after the trilogue uh, negotiations will, this will come back to Parliament and also the EU councils where member states decide Italy with its new government has been uh, in confrontation, a tough confrontation. And even if we lose this, we can promise we will keep working at the national level. And Angelica has already said at PNR we do this. Even if a law like this is passed, when it gets implemented at the national level, you can still do something and the highest courts are still there for you. Let's uh, sum up uh, a year of uh, presidency in the uh, European Council. We have, we have um, debated a lot of things. Uh, one thing we didn't uh, manage to uh, to, uh, for which we didn't have any time was the e-privacy directive. The uh, European flag committed suicide. I don't want to end on a depressive note. It's also the last talk of the day, and I don't want you to get too drunk. The, the successes we had that nobody would have noticed otherwise, 
Let's start simply. It's uh, the law for. Sorry. The implementation of the NIST directive, a law on. I didn't catch what it was. So things have been copied from our papers. Uh, it's good if people listen to small organizations and uh, we were very happy but what stays in place with this law is a certain two-faced character because the interior secret service the bbt is now the authority uh, uh, responsible for the nist because that now tells us that they are important uh, responsible for keeping us safe from hacking but also it's responsible for the state trojan so there's a kind of conflict there also in austria you have a right for three years you have the right to complain if you believe that your privacy has been disrespected and the interior ministry wanted to abolish uh, the uh, period um, for police access to data to two years there would have been a gap and we went to the interior ministry in the snow here and uh, gave them a hard disk with some storage space because the reasoning that protocol data could only be stored for two years would be storage minimization so we thought okay we can solve this we'll send them a hard disk and yes great that has been extended again to three years Another nice thing, the uh, telecommunications law in Austria was um, changed. We, earlier this year, we looked at all the sanctions for net neutrality violations in Europe and created this overview of where the countries are at. In some countries, it costs, it's it can cost up to 9,000 euros, but in others it can cost several millions. And we showed the countries how how good or bad they're doing at this. Um, and these, of course, are enshrined in national law. Euro, uh, Austria was in uh, last place together with Portugal and Ireland because we had no sanctions at all. But uh, this year we're in first place with 10% of global revenue and that's more than the gdpr and uh, we were very happy about how much europe uh, improved over the course of uh, a year we were very happy the same law goes uh, through uh, another round of input uh, people say whether they think it's good or bad and um, before this happens before it's sent to parliament and after this, um, the law included a new form of data retention. Dynamic IP addresses that everybody was uh, uses would have been subject to data retention and they would have been easier to uh, use in copyright infringement as um, sanctions as well. And uh, we reported on this and uh, were thankfully able to prevent this new form of data retention together with ISPA. Let's uh, take a short look at the future. There are, we know about a few things that well, we, already, we already know about a few new things. One thing is going to be uh, the real name, uh, the obligation to use real names on uh, social media where people uh, supposedly uh, will be required to sign up with a registered SIM card or an ID card. There will no longer be any anonymous SIM cards in Austria starting uh, from the 1st of January. But you can also create, uh, you, you also have to use a, uh, have to use real names in social media. And this is supposedly to uh, deal with hate on the internet with uh, but um, this is of course not uh, not going to solve that problem but it's going to uh, create uh, huge privacy headaches 
there's also going to be a, a network network law after using the German example in Austria and we're go, we're already we're we're looking at the proposed uh, implementations of this we are also going to publish a new version of our handbook uh, of anti-terror measures which is which is going to propose uh, evaluations of uh, of anti-terrorism measures and um, propose ways to reduce and to uh, to abolish measures that are not uh, accomplishing their their goal. And um, we already did this a few years ago, but uh, we want to update it and want to encourage um, encourage amateurs to uh, to uh, um, to take part in the legislative process. Okay, not much to add, but I would just wanted to say that we don't all do this in our spare time these days, although, of course, it started as a hobby for, for many of us. We are a team of 10 now working in our office in Vienna, and uh, we have much more work to do at the European level, but we have many plans for the, at the national level as well. And the more support we get from civil society, the better we can work. So we try to be as efficient and cooperative as we can. Uh, just about every document and every data record that we use can be found on our websites. There are meetings every month, the net political evening and the coordination meeting. And at the end, it's also about the contribution by supporting memberships uh, and donations that makes this possible. And particularly those regular donating memberships make it possible to plan in the long term. And that's very much necessary these days. So supporting members now will get a welcome present from us, from t-shirts to the camera covers, quite useful stuff sometimes. And Look at this and uh, see, we want this kind of size that we've reached to, we have want to maintain this and for that we need people to support us and in, otherwise it will be an unequal fight and we would, I, I would hate to have to tell you that the other side will win. If you have more questions, we have a Q&A, but we will also have an assembly in the Freedom Cluster near the Edry stand. We will be there from 12 to 5 tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the talk and for your work. Thank you for the talk and your work. And you know the drill. We have four microphones. We have the internet, and we'll start with the internet. You mentioned the uh, has Kickel left yet uh, have petition, but that's a non-binding uh, petition. Why, why, aren't, why didn't you start a petition on the uh, on the government website that would have to be treated in Parliament? Well, our experiences with these uh, citizens' initiatives were kind of bad. At the time of data retention, we started the largest civil initiative uh, uh, that we ever had in Austria. It led to nothing, and the addressee of this message is not the parliament anyway. It's Sebastian Kurz, the head of government, that can <clears throat> dismiss Kickel, and parliament can only dismiss the whole government such uh, and as well as van der Bellen, the president so you have to address the chancellor and and tell him to be responsible and at the same time i have to say that we designed it this way so that the data of people that critically speak out against this government will be given to the chancellor but only will be handed over to the president's office because we believe that van der Bellen, the president, will deal with this data in a responsible way. But in a parliament that has an FPÖ right-wing uh, parliament president, and uh, with such a parliament, I wouldn't be so sure that the data will be treated well. Mikrofon Nummer eins, bitte, und schön nah dran gehen, bitte. Um, you said that uh, 
Problem sein könnte, that, dass das uh, kontrolliert wird. Jetzt habe ich mich gefragt, nachdem ich eigentlich nie krank bin. Certain uh, that uh, health data was was being analyzed. What happens if I'm never sick? That was a bit exaggerated. This is about n a non-typical uh, medical s situation. So normal sick time behavior will not be conspicuous. And we do have the Congress <laughs> disease that might help. You mentioned that uh, doctors' um, confidenti confidentiality was being weakened. What were the reactions there? Yes, that did occur. There was a review process where you can read the position that uh, was handed in. And yes, at many levels this is a problem because doctors are just supposed to be looking after their patients' well-being and not some other external legal process. So to put them in this position and, and involve them in this kind of procedure is, is just really very bad. And it has this chilling effect that you feel that uh, you wonder if it, whether you should go to the doctor at all. Anyone else? No? All right. Then a, hap a good evening to all of you. Very good night. and. Uh, Thanks for listening to the translation as well, the interpretation.